Hello, my name is Jamie Gillett and welcome to my presentation on the electromagnetic spectrum for the course of access to higher education, health and medical science, the Dimensions Training Solutions Unit 21. So this presentation is going to cover the use of UV light, so ultraviolet light and biofluorescence in crime scene investigations. And throughout the uh, presentation, I will compare and contrast properties of visible and ultraviolet light. I'm going to explain some applications of visible and ultraviolet light. I will explain the main biohazards of ultraviolet and uh, infrared radiation and their effects. And then throughout the whole presentation, I will discuss properties, differences and uses of ultraviolet and IR. So first of all, I will look at the properties of visible and UV light. Both ultraviolet and visible light are electromagnetic radiation. The only real difference between them is the frequency and wavelength, though this does carry a lot of different properties within them. So visible light is just one small band of electromagnetic radiation. In fact, what is actually known as white light actually consists of a whole range of wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, which we see as colour. Colour is seen in the wavelength range of 400 to 700 nanometers. Objects appear in a rich array of colours and hues, but what we're actually seeing is specific wavelengths of colour. If we see something in red, it is because it's transmitting red light towards us, and the same goes for green or blue, or the primary colours of light. We are able to see much more than just three colours, due to the mixing together in different levels. The colours we are seeing at C is dependent on the pigments of the item from where the light is reflected off of. So if the item has uh, red pigment, for instance, um, tomato, uh, red light will be reflected and all the other wavelengths will be absorbed into them. Ultraviolet light lays beyond the visible spectrum into higher wavelengths and frequencies that cannot be seen. It is a band of electromagnetic radiation between visible light and X-rays, uh, with a wavelength of between 400 nanometers and 10 nanometers. It has a shorter wavelength and a much higher frequency, so it's able to carry more energy than visible light is. Even though it's not possible to see ultraviolet light with the human eye, we are able to feel their effects. Some animals, however, are able to see it just as we are able to see it there's other colours in the spectrum, but humans, uh, human eyes have not evolved to that point. In respect of a crime scene investigation, ultraviolet light, though invisible to the human eye, its long wavelength band can be used as what is referred to as a black light. So blood and other body fluids have a property called biofluorescence, and this means that it can absorb one set of wavelengths and emit a completely different this means that the blood or other bodily fluids in a crime scene can take that wavelength from the black light and then emit a much lower frequency band of electromagnetic radiation or visible light that we are able to see. And I'll talk much more about this later on. But this also means that ultraviolet and visible light do work together to get those results that we are actually needing. So we'll move on to the applications of visible light and ultraviolet light within a crime scene investigation kind of background. So first of all, I'm going to look at spectroscopy. So spectroscopy is um, white light from a continuous source of electromagnetic radiation will produce an uninterrupted band of wavelengths. Individual chemical elements, however, will produce specific discrete wavelengths based on arrangements of electrons around the nucleus of their atom. If the element is the source of the light, it will emit specific wavelengths, but if the element is between the source and the observer, it acts like a filter and it absorbs individual wavelengths. A spectroscope is a simple handheld device consisting of a device with a lens and a prism or diffraction grating to disperse light. In forensics, this is used to detect illegal or controlled substances, or residues in unidentified samples. Ultraviolet reflectance spectrography generates images from ultraviolet radiation in a technique known as RUVIS, or Reflective Ultraviolet Imaging Systems. 
This allows the detection of latent fingerprints on a non-porous surface without the need for dusting or chemical treatments. Blacklight, as mentioned earlier, a blacklight is the use of ultraviolet to illuminate bodily fluids such as blood, semen, vaginal fluid and perspiration. Biofluorescence works at a molecular level. If we were to look at an atom, electrons move between energy levels where they gain or lose energy. This can be uh, admitted as a light wave, for instance. So when an atom receives energy from the impact of UV light, an electron may move up to a higher energy state in a single jump. As the electron loses energy, it may do so in a number of smaller steps, so on its final jump back down to its original state, it emits a wave of light with much lower energy. This lower energy means lower frequency and a longer wavelength. This then means that it has moved down into the spectrum of visible light, meaning that we are able to see it then. We then have a forensic light source. So while we have already mentioned spectroscopy and black light, it does need to be mentioned that a um, forensic black light, a forensic light source, sorry, is capable of doing a lot more. A forensic light source is made up of a powerful lamp containing an ultraviolet, visible and infrared components of light. It then filters down the light into individual wavelengths that enhance the visualisation of evidence by light interaction techniques, including fluorescence, absorption and oblique lighting. By using this, it is possible to see and find latent fingerprints, as I said, body fluids, as it's meant, uh, but it was also able to see hair and fibres. Bruises, bite marks, wound patterns, shoe and foot imprints, gunshot residues, drug traces, questioned documents, bone fragment detection, etc. It is a lot more sensitive than traditional methods, allowing a much better and more efficient way of looking for the evidence at a crime scene. While using any form of radiation, it needs, there are always biohazards and it does need to be looked at. So the biohazards of ultraviolet and infrared are no different. So I'll start with infrared. Infrared radiation is emitted from any hot object and will heat up anything it touches. So you, the human body, for instance, uh, stove, etc., etc., can all, all emit infrared radiation. If it is strong enough, the infrared radiation can cause superficial burns and blisters to skin tissues. But the more danger from this is direct contact with the source. For example, the hot plate on a hot stove. It, put your hand on there, it will cause much more um, burns. Focused infrared can also cause damage to parts of the eye. So if an infrared lamp is used during a medical treatment, for example, patients are often given protective eyewear to avoid any unnecessary damage. Though these lamps are rated at 500 watts of power, so this is over a thousand times more powerful than the IR LEDs that are in a remote control or on my mouse. Um, so the danger from those are minimal. UV radiation or ultraviolet radiation, for, uh, for example, sunlight, however, is much more dangerous than infrared. Uh, ultraviolet has a much higher frequency of electromagnetic radiation that carries much more energy than infrared and is able to penetrate much further and is actually much closer to an X-ray in frequency of electromagnetic radiation than infrared is. Ultraviolet can break chemical bonds in molecules and cause chemical reactions to take place within them. And too much exposure can cause penetration into human cells and cause changes within the DNA. Uh, DNA changes can result in mutation, cancerous cell development, etc. Thank you for watching my presentation. I have been Jamie Gillett. Thank you very much. Goodbye.